Hello and welcome to Film Companion South. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Jagme Tadaram, the much-awaited film from Karthik Subaraj, starring Danush, Aishwarya Lakshmi, Joju George, and a whole bunch of other actors. The film begins with an image of a boat filled with refugees of all kinds, and they are somewhere in the English Channel, and they are approached by an English patrol boat, and something really bad happens. Now, if you look back at Karthik Subaraj's career, you will find a very similar scenario in Neer, where three Indian fishermen, one of them Vijay Sethupati, uh, you know, set out into the waters to fish and they end up being attacked by a Sri Lankan patrol boat. Now, what am I getting at? I think there is some similarity between these two situations because a boat full of refugees, three Tamil fishermen, both of them traveling into waters that may not be their own. Uh, that is their own countries because they, they're kind of crossing over into another land. So the question now becomes of what is your land? Where do you belong? And this question seems to interest Karthik Subaraj, especially in the context of the Elam movement. Like Neer, there is another short film of Karthik Subaraj's called Kachipere. And in that also, the last scene has to do with war on Sri Lanka. In Jigar Tanda, there is a reporter who says he covers RSL and Elam. And in uh, Iraibi, the uh, SJ Studio plays a director, right? The movie that he's making, the title is 17th May, which is a very important date in the history of the Elam movement. So we have seen this interest of Kartik Subarajas in bits and pieces throughout his career. But in Jagame Tandiram, for the first time, we get a feeling that he's diving into this interest of his in detail. And it's not just particularly the Elam issue. It, it's a global refugee crisis. It's the crisis of immigrants, which Kartik Subaraj addresses through the lives of a few displaced Sri Lankans who are living in London. There is an even line that goes, Nama Payengalam Pulingada. There's another touch that I'm kind of not too sure what to make of, but uh, it's also kind of fits into this overall narrative that I've just spoken about. Uh, the Danush character, who's a gangster from Madurai, his name is Surali, he does not even seem to be aware of the fact that there were Sri Lankan refugees who lived in Tamil Nadu. Maybe this is Kartik Subaraj's way of saying that the younger generation is slowly forgetting what happened then and that it is very important to remember. The first half of the film, though on an OTT platform, it's very difficult to kind of say which is the half and which is, at what point are we really cutting it. Uh, the first chunk, big chunk of the film is based on the rivalry between two men named Sivadas and Peter. Now, this rivalry arises because they are both involved in unlawful activities and they kind of, you know, keep treading on each other's territory there, that word again. But then there's more. Peter is a racist. He's a white supremacist. He wants an England that is filled only with white people. Whereas Sivadas is a humanist. He is open to black or brown or white or any kind of person. And through a series of events, Danush gets into the middle of this clash of ideologies between Peter and Shivadas. Before we get on with the rest of the story, let's talk about the two actors who play Peter and Shivadas. Now, Shivadas is played by Joju George and it is excellent. I mean, his character is written very, very generically, but his bigness, you know, he's such a big man. His bigness and the warmth of his that you see in films like June, the Malayalam film June, that makes up for quite a lot. As for Peter, he's played excellently by James Cosmo and this is surprising because in a lot of our films, the people who play foreign characters, they almost turn out to be very, very bad actors. Now, this actor is not only excellent, but what really surprised me was that his lines sound like that an actual Englishman would say. They don't, they don't sound like lines that an Indian would think an Englishman would say, you know. They really fit into the world of Peter. The meter and the phrasing of these lines is perfect and Peter even ends up with the film's best punchline which is about Lord Ganesha. After a very, very long time, we see a villain who is a worthy opponent to the hero. Now, as you expect with Kartik Subaraj, Jagame Tandaram is a very flamboyantly made film. There is one particular musical Santosh Narayan that, that, is, that really made me smile. Uh, there is going to be this big important meeting and the sound that he produces sounds like, you know, like, like running a comb across the teeth. You know, you hear it in certain films uh, and it, it sounds like that combined with the symphonic orchestra. It produces such an eerie kind of atmosphere. And some of the setups work beautifully. Sriyas Krishna is the cinematographer. Uh, I really enjoyed the one where there is a car that lies across a train track. And the train is approaching them and I'm not going to tell you more but the way that scene plays out and 
not just when the train is coming, but also after Danush gets into the train. That's really fantastic. There's another scene with Danush in a fight in a small restaurant that he runs. It's a small parota mess. And, and the narrowness of the, of, the, of the place, it lends itself beautifully to a kind of a choreography of a fight that you kind of haven't seen before. And probably the film's most interesting shot is a 360 degree shot that keeps going round and round. And there are four people in this scene. And each time the camera turns, the power equations between the four people change. You kind of see gradually who has the power at first and at the end, who has it next. Now, this can be shown through direct cuts also, but somehow this, 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 this 360 degree lends this air of flamboyance, which is, of course, Karthik Subaraj, Karthik Subaraj, Karthik Subaraj. But when it comes to the writing as opposed to the staging, you feel that Karthik Subaraj has not been quite as confident for some reason. I don't know if you get this feeling, but I get the feeling in a lot of recent Tamil films that uh, they overwrite the film and then try to fix it to a certain length at the editing table. So there are sudden jerks and, and the film kind of goes all out of whack. There is no rhythm. The films don't, the scenes don't lock organically to each other. That kind of thing happens here too. Now, Ashwarya Lakshmi plays the heroine and she has a great scene where she talks about her experiences in Sri Lanka. But her introduction scene, she's a nightclub singer, is when she sings the old hit, Kadur Dan Nan Paduen. And she kind of, the scene is staged beautifully in a way because originally we hear a different voice. The Danush is there too. And when he starts kind of seeing her romantically, the voice switches back to Ellari Suri's voice from the original song. But then for some reason, the song has to stop and the whole thing is done so abruptly. And then the switch to the romantic scene again between Danush and Aishwarya Lakshmi, that also feels extremely abrupt. And there's another really odd stretch where, if I'm remembering this right, we cut from a funeral dance to Danush being captured. As in he's already been captured. We don't see the actual capture, but then there is something that feels missing in all this. I also wish they had gotten rid of the larger subplot about immigrants and just kept it to Sri Lankan Tamils, which, you know, the smaller the scope is, especially in a movie, this is not a mini series, right? In a movie, the smaller the scope, the bigger the points you can make. And they're also trying to make this larger point about a bill that will uh, suppress the rights of immigrants or drive them out of the country or whatever. And I felt that that felt extraneous because so much of that is already being told through the lives of the Sri Lankan Tamils. And as an issue, it's very difficult to feel for an issue because in a movie, it's only about this much long, right? It's very difficult to feel for an issue. So you have to personalize this issue through people, through people who make us feel what this issue is all about, which means that when people concerned with this issue die, you should really feel for them because by feeling for them, you're also feeling for the issue at large. But here, when people die, they you just get no reaction at all. Except for one character's death. That's a real surprise and it's very, very effective. It's very, very moving. But we must give this film this much. This is not your usual hero. What Dhanush is playing, the character that he's playing is not much of a stretch for him. He's done stuff like this before. But as a character itself, it's a brand new thing that we're seeing where he is an unrepentant mercenary for about two thirds of the film. I was really impressed by the fact that the leading man has zero redeeming qualities for about two thirds of the film. He has a great line, Kasu Kurta, Yenna Vena Seve, Yaruk Vena Seve, which means that he's willing to sell himself to anybody without any thought about the consequences. And even in this Madurai portion, the small Madurai portion, Karthik Subaraj manages to bring in this issue of territory and ownership because there is a North Indian who comes to Madurai and is trying to become uh, Danush's rival, or maybe he's already a rival, and Danush can't stand that. So we are already seeing, even before the actual we go to London with Danush and see those things develop. We're already seeing a kind of territorial war. And I felt that this should have been Danush's coming of age story because he has this great line, Tanakan vandata orekum valikum. You know, he, it's his pain that we should feel that should drive us, the audience. He should be the audience representative to this complex issue. The film should have been about his wrapping his head around this complex issue. But guess what? The same point is made with superb economy with the character played by Gajaraj. His name is Murugesan and he's been a refugee all his life. All he wants is his own piece of land and the way he finally gets his own piece of land is one of the most wonderful pieces of the film. He also gets a terrific line about what a first date constitutes. The last third of the film is somewhat better because things get a little more emotional and we seem a little more invested in the proceedings, but even these seem somewhat hastily written and hastily done. Overall, with Jagamit Andaram, I got the feeling of watching a not bad generic drama, but I'm left with the same question every time I see a major star in a film that has an issue, as opposed to a Pariyar Impermal, which is not 
about a major star it is about a smaller hero to be fair to kartik subaraj the heroic moments the slow mo moments the big bgm moments the putting on the sunglasses moments they are all kept to a minimum but there is still this feeling of one guy one hero using his heroism and tackling a very very tackling and solving a very very complex issue because one of the best lines of the films it comes from the aishwarya lakshmi character it goes you can start a war but once it starts you can't end it but apparently if you're a hero you can and that sometimes ends up being a disservice to the issue though you're often torn between the fact that yes someone did a film about this as opposed to the film is not as as perfect as it could be so that's it about jagamit andram if you like this video do subscribe to film companion south and see you soon at the movies